Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. Uh, so this video, really, I'm talking about improving your brakes. I've just gone and checked my brake pads on my motorcycle, front and rear. There's a little life left in them, but I'm kind of thinking, how could I improve the braking uh, efficiency on the motorcycle without breaking the bank? Catch you inside. Revelator Alpha. Hello again, uh, welcome to Revelator Alf. So uh, really I'm talking about improving the braking on your motorcycle. Now you can apply this to all motorcycles, not just a specific one. Obviously I ride a Harley Davidson Sport Glide soft tail with the M8 engine. One of the major criticisms of Harley Davidson's in general has always been their poor braking. And a lot of people kind of relate this to the way they were a, a few years ago. Ago. however their brakes have dramatically improved over recent years however people still uh, talk about the braking issues with Harley Davidson a lot of that is to do with not just Harleys but actually heavy bikes if you've got really heavy bikes, uh, there's a lot of momentum there, so that you need uh, stronger brakes, heavier duty brakes, as it were, to stop that bike in its tracks. However, lots of people tend to forget that older motorcycles were with drum brakes. And if you think uh, modern brakes are bad, you want to try riding with those. Anyway, I digress. So here's, here's where I'm at with improving your braking system or improving your braking efficiency. I think first of all, before you spend any money, and this is where the free part uh, comes from this video, uh, lots of people don't want to admit it, but actually sometimes the reason you're not getting very good braking from your motorcycle is because you're doing it wrong. Uh, you're not really applying the brakes in the appropriate manner, uh, you're not uh, modulating the braking, you're not uh, modifying the way you're riding so that you don't have to demand too much braking at a late stage. So there's lots of things uh, that we can do do in terms of the way we ride our motorcycles and also the braking technique. Now this video isn't about that, but that's just something to bear in mind. You know, before you start looking at the technical aspect of improving your brakes, look to improve your braking technique, uh, first of all, for whatever motorcycle you're riding. Okay, we've got that out of the way. Let's talk about the actual brakes themselves. Now here's another free tip for you uh, to improve your braking efficiency. Um, uh, what I mean is get some brake cleaner and actually clean your brake discs. Lots of people overlook this and I'm not talking about using WD-40. This is one sure uh, way to end up in the morgue. No, uh, you need some kind of uh, brake cleaner. There's lots of types. I'm not going to talk about specific types, but go to your uh, motorcycle parts uh, supplier, whatever it is, and just get a brake cleaner or heavy duty brake cleaner. And basically this uh, cleans and it evaporates uh, pretty much as soon as you put it on there as well. Wipe it all off with a rag and away you go. Having clean brake discs is really going to help you. So that's free number two. Okay, so the third thing that you can look at uh, is when was the last time you changed your brake fluid? Now, if you're watching previous videos when I talked about testing the moisture content on your brake fluid, uh, there are little gadgets which you can buy and you can check my previous video on that that you can uh, put into your master cylinders that will check the moisture content. So if there's moisture in there, um, your brakes uh, aren't gonna work as well. There's gonna be sort of fading, flat spots, all sorts of stuff as well. And it's all to do with the compressibility of hydraulic fluid as opposed to water. And let's not even talk about the risk of rust. So uh, something that you need to look at is actually, why don't you just change the brake fluid? Change your brake fluid and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so that's, Free number three. Okay, so the next thing uh, to look at, again, this is kind of away from braking, but it kind of plays a big part in your braking efficiency or, or rather how your motorcycle performs under braking. And that is the, the condition of your tires and the pressures at which they're at as well. 
uh, check the condition of the tires, check the pressure as well, and make sure that they are working uh, at their best, at their optimum, when you are braking as well because that plays a, a big part. The the uh, the load that is imparted upon the tyre, how it deforms, how it uh, grips the road, uh, all that kind of thing. So make sure that's working uh, properly, front and rear. So the next thing you got to look at is what kind of braking system do you have? Are we going old school and going with drum brakes and, and uh, cables or are we talking hydraulic brakes? Are we talking disc brakes front and rear? so on and so forth. So you've got to look at what kind of braking system that you have and is it all functioning correctly? Is it set correctly? Those are the kind of things that you want to look at. You want to inspect the lines. You want to inspect uh, the cables, as it were. Uh, you want to inspect the hoses. Make sure that everything on that braking system is in good working order. Of course, if you've got a hydraulic system, you know, are there any leaks? You know, all that kind of stuff. Have you got uh, rusted brake lines? Have you got warped brake lines? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. So make sure that whatever you have is correct and it is working correctly so that is just a good maintenance check of your braking system okay so that's basically five free ways to check to improve to get the best out of what you have already the next thing to do then is to say okay well how can i actually improve the braking system i think there's a lot of people out there who would actually tell you to go and spend big money uh, on uh, upgrading your brakes which is not a bad idea by the way uh, but I'm saying that big money on your brakes when maybe you just don't need it for your kind of riding and the way you ride so let's just say you have a motorcycle that has a reputation for bad braking or bad performing brakes. Uh, let's say like the Harley Davidson, everybody says, oh, really bad uh, performing brakes. Well, it really depends, of course, how you ride that motorcycle, as I've already said, and how those brakes work for you. Now, I've found that on the modern Harley Davidsons, actually the factory fitted brake pads, uh, whilst they're not fantastic and they're kind of a, a closely guarded secret from Harley Davidson they're kind of this organic compound uh, but actually they work really well they're they're progressive they they stop when I need them to stop so they seem to work well but lots of people still say that they're not great okay so what are your options so well, actually what you can do is look at different types of brake pads now it really depends where you are in the world and what options you have available to you, of course. So I'm not going to really talk about specific brake pad brands. I'm just going to be talking about different types of brakes. So you can either go for the stock ones, the ones that are fitted on your motorcycle, or you can go for aftermarket. You can either go for the organic type base uh, ones where they've got bits of glass, bits of rubber, bits of... Uh, different composite materials within those and then you can get up to the semi sintered which is a little bit of organic and a bit of uh, metal uh, filings as it were are all mashed together in a in a compound as well and then you go for the sintered which is kind of made up of metal uh, filings and uh, you know bits of jelly babies and all that kind of stuff so there's lots of variation with the different types of uh, brake pad that you can get. Some wear out sooner, like that's in the organic, but they're a little bit quieter. Uh, but they're less abrasive as well. So let's say if you have a show bike and you have a chrome plated brake disc, then you probably want to go for something like that uh, rather than a sintered brake pad because that's just going to wear away at uh, your brake disc uh, or your brake rotor. So you really need to match the brake pad for your bike and also the kind of riding that you're going to do. So if you're the kind of rider that wants to ride harder and brake later, uh, as in kind of sports bike riding, let's say, uh, then actually what you really want to do is go for a, a better performing pad at hotter temperatures with higher demands, with higher load demands. And that's gonna be something like sintered brake pads. Now, also you may wanna look at uh, changing your brake discs, your brake rotors. 
Now, it really depends, again, what your motorcycle is and how you feel that change is going to benefit of you. But obviously, the, the negative aspect of this is that it actually costs quite a lot of money. So it really depends on what you're going to go for. Do you have a single disc setup at the front? Do you have a dual disc setup at the front? Uh, so on and so forth. So you need to look at the pricing. How much is it going to really benefit you and all that kind of stuff? There are lots of different brake disc rotor designs uh, and also different sizes as well essentially the bigger the size rotor uh, the more surface area there is to share the heat load so in other words your discs aren't going to overheat uh, as much as a smaller disc let's say uh, and then uh, you, there is less chance of uh, warping less chance of brake fade uh, overheating you know so on and so forth so you know you can use a bigger brake disc if you wish uh, to share that load. You could also have a combination of changing the brake disc and changing the brake calipers. Instead of having two piston calipers or a single piston caliper, you might go up to a four piston caliper. You might go into the aftermarket or get a try and modify your bike uh, with a brake caliper from another bike that performs well. There's lots of different options. So you're really going to have to start looking into the mechanical side and you may need to take advice of this and also whether any change will interfere with your motorcycle system and i'm going to talk a little bit about that briefly now it's not just about braking, but it really depends how that braking is detected. Do you have ABS on your bike? Um, is there kind of some kind of onboard diagnostic recognition of braking, uh, so on and so forth. So it's, and sometimes it might not just be a simple fix just to change out brake calipers on a brand new bike, for example. You might have to do a little bit more investigation. With all of these processes, comes a cost and there comes quite a substantial cost when we're talking about uh, really upgrading your brakes. Now the question you've got to ask yourself is do you really need to do these big upgrades on your motorcycle for the kind of riding that you're doing? So let's just say for example you're riding a cruiser motorcycle which I do. Lots of people would say that the, the bike that I particularly ride uh, the braking isn't really good enough. Now, I have not found that. I've actually found it to be perfectly adequate, but everybody has an opinion, which is perfectly fine. Now, one of the main criticisms of my particular model was for this model year 2021, there wasn't an upgrade of the braking system at the front. There was the, There's a single disc at the front, a single rotor, and lots of people want the dual disc setup. Uh, but Harley-Davidson, in their infinite wisdom, said, oh, no, we're not doing that. And you kind of understand why, because if they're happy with that braking system, why do they need to change it? So as an owner, if I decide to go into the aftermarket and change my front end from a, a single disc setup or rotor setup to a dual disc, dual rotor setup, uh, that's going to be a, a big expense. So I'm going to have to make sure that it uh, works with the rest of my motorcycle. And it's already been proven uh, to work as well. Uh, then I've got to see, actually, well, am I really going to be using this dual disc setup uh, to its full benefit? And do I even really need to do that when I actually haven't even uh, considered uh, the way I ride? I haven't uh, checked my full braking system. I, you know, I usually ride with dirty rotors. I haven't even considered just upgrading my brake pads. So there's lots of things that you could have done before automatically thinking, actually, I definitely need to change my brakes or I definitely need to change my brake caliper for something else. Now, of course, that's not to say that you shouldn't do this because this is a purely subjective thing. It really depends how you feel about your braking system. But the point here is that lots of people will make assumptions about a braking system when they're not really fully testing it to its uh, full capability, as it were. Which is the best braking system for your motorcycle? Again, purely subjective in many ways. Which is the best brake pad for your motorcycle or for the way you ride? Which is the best brand? You know, is it EBC, uh, Ferodo, whatever? You know, is it Brembo? Is it uh, Lindell's? Wh whatever it is. Could it be that actually you need to ignore the branding per se 
and go more for the compound and the type uh, that you're using. Are you going to go for organic? Are you going to go for semi, uh, uh, you know, Kevlar base? Or are you going to go for some kind of sintered brake pads? Or are you going to go back to your dealer, uh, your motorcycle dealership, and actually say, right, okay, I just want the original factory uh, brake pads on that uh, on that motorcycle, whatever it is. Now, what you might find, it really depends on the motorcycle manufacturer, of course, that the original equipment, the original parts, uh, are really quite expensive. In fact, I just did a quick calculation this morning between uh, some uh, EBC brake pads and some uh, authentic Harley Davidson brake pads for my motorcycle and they're nearly three times more than the EBC brake pads which is a lot of money now as I say many people would say actually the original brake pads are absolutely fine and I've got to say when I changed my front brake pads from the originals to the uh, new brake pads the EBC brake pads whilst there was a difference uh, in terms of, oh God, I could really feel these brake pads. I had to remind myself that these are brand new brake pads, whereas those were really quite worn out. I had to remind myself, and when we fitted them, uh, then everything was given a really good clean. I had to remind myself that in the past, when I've changed brake hoses, rubber brake hoses, to, let's say, steel-lined uh, braided brake hoses, uh, that actually, that also came with a change in brake fluid as well. So a lot of this could be down to the brake fluid that I changed and not necessarily down to the type of brake hose that I changed. I've got to say this, when you talk about brake hoses as well, because that would be one of the other things that people talk about, change your brake hoses to steel uh, braided brake hoses, whatever. The, the difference, I would say, is it's not, it's marginal. Now, there is a difference, I would say, between braided hoses and worn out uh, rubber hoses, let's say, you know, your stock hoses. If you've got an old bike, I would put braided hoses on there because that's going to be your best option. But you don't have to. You could go for stock replacements as well. But it's it's the difference between a worn out item and a brand new item. It's exactly the same when you change your motorcycle tires. You put new tires on and the bike feels rejuvenated. It feels fantastic, doesn't it? But then you've got to remind yourself that you're actually running on really old tires. They're really worn out tires. And now you've got new tires. Let's say if you change your tires to a different brand... You could be tricked into thinking, say, well, these new tyres are just so much better than that other brand of tyre. Actually, what you're feeling is just a really new tyre against an old, worn-out tyre. You've kind of got to run with that tyre for a few thousand miles to really see in all aspects of your riding whether it's really made a difference. And it's exactly the same with different types of brake pads, uh, brake lines, brake hoses, uh, brake caliper setups, different types of brake disc rotors or whatever. There's going to be a lot of opinion. There's going to be a lot of people telling you or companies telling you that this particular product is the best. But really, it comes down to you, your riding, how you ride and what you're demanding from your brakes uh, in the first instance. If I had to honestly ask myself which is the best braking system set up for me, then actually I would have to look towards my experience of riding motorcycles and riding particular bikes in particular conditions and the brake pad choices uh, which I've made in the past. Actually, some of the brake pads which I've had in the past have not been branded names, but I've had it in my mind that actually every year I'm going to be changing brake pads. Religiously, every spring, I'm just going to take out the old brake pads and put new ones in, whether they're a cheaper alternative or not. It's the same with brake hoses. I, I would look at that and say, well, actually, do I really need to change the brake hoses? Am I really putting that much pressure on the brake hoses that I think that a relatively good condition brake hose is going to bulge? There's going to be expansion there. I'd also look at the quality, the condition, the moisture content, let's say, of the brake fluid. Do I just need to give the bike a really good service, the braking system a really good service? We can easily jump into something and start spending lots of money uh, on something that you don't actually really need 
but you may want. Now you may want to change the braking system, let's say in this case, because you just want to change it. You want to change it for aesthetics. You want to change it for whatever. You may feel that there is going to be a performance benefit for you, so that's absolutely fine. But for most people, actually, braking efficiency and braking performance really starts with you as the rider and then you can make small incremental changes just to see if that works or not. The older the bike gets, the more changes you may have to make to improve that braking system. But that's something that you'll figure out as you're going along. If you want to make performance upgrades from, from a really old technology to a brand new technology. From my part, if I looked at my current motorcycle, actually the brakes themselves were never really that bad. I've got to say that the single uh, disc setup at the front, the single rotor setup, it was perfectly decent for the, the style of riding which I do these days. I'm not really riding that hard, I'm not really braking that late either, so there really isn't a high demand on those brakes front and rear. And I suppose that's the way I look at it. I've got to match the equipment on my motorcycle to the style of riding that I do and also to cover any emergency uh, situations. Am I giving myself enough space between myself and a vehicle in front that gives me lots of time to brake as well and so I could do an emergency brake if I need to? If all these factors are satisfied, then I don't really need to change my braking system. I don't need to upgrade it. If you feel that you do need an improvement, then you probably do need to make the change. Now, I wish I could tell you that there's undeniable data, irrefutable proof that changing from one uh, brake pad to another uh, will give you 50%, 30% uh, more efficiency. I would love to be able to show you that going from a smaller rotor to a bigger rotor will give you a big performance gain, let's say 30%. Rubber hoses to braided uh, lines uh, gives you another certain percentage. Uh, one kind of uh, brake fluid against another kind of brake fluid would be better. I wish I could show that to you. There is data out there and there is objective data out there. But if I'm going to say that one is particularly better than another product, I really couldn't say. I can't say that one brand of brake pad is going to be better than another. All you can say is, again, it comes back down to you, your motorcycle, and how you feel about that change. Will that work for you? It doesn't always mean that you make the change and it's a change for the better. It could be a change for the worse. Catch you again on another video, whenever that is. Don't forget to subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. Ta-da!